Hello everyone and welcome to a new episode of Careers Talks. Today I have Evan. Evan studied computer science at the New York University of Abu Dhabi and now he works as a software engineer at Google in London. Evan works in the Android Media Solutions team and today we're going to be talking a bit more about what he does at Google as a software engineer, what does the team do and a bit more on your career choices, the interview process at Google and some other interesting topics. So uh, how are you doing first of all? I'm Evan? doing well, <laughs> like, thanks Tamar for inviting me here, this is a pleasure. Of course, uh, thanks a lot for coming. Yeah. I think we can dive straight into it. A lot of people would be excited to know what do you do at uh, Google and what does it mean to be part of the Android Media Solutions team? Mm -hmm. Well, so uh, for starters, it's a great question. It's also probably a hard question. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's I'm a software engineer, uh, first and foremost. Um, I am part, as you said, of the Android Media Solutions team. Mm -hmm. This is something inside, um, let's say, the Android world, the mm -hmm. Android ecosystem, mm -hmm. um, especially for people that are not familiar. Android is a, a mobile device operating system. Mm -hmm. Is people normally associated with phones, but it's also in watches, True. in cars, and in um, TVs. In TVs yeah. as well, exactly. Uh, so it's not just phones. Mm -hmm. uh, that might be a misconception True. some people might have. So uh, that's a clarification. Um, Android Media Solutions um, is part of a bigger Android Media team, mm -hmm. and and an Android Media and the Android Media team essentially deals with uh, anything that that interacts or uses media at some sort in an Android. Uh, device mm -hmm. makes that, sense. That means for playback, for recording, for for even playing a ringtone or okay. for calls. That like there's a lot of different uh, segments to that. Mm -hmm. We in particular in Under Media Solutions, um, we focus on especially on giving solutions for developers. Yeah. Uh, so that they can use uh media inside android in a easy and straightforward yeah. way yeah um one of them like probably one of the biggest user um biggest um public projects we have right now um is called uh media three media mm -hmm. three uh used to be part like the before that there used to be something called exoplayer exoplayer is essentially the biggest uh, media media player inside of Android, uh, and it's widely used by a bunch of re um, like high uh, visibility apps. Mm -hmm. um, but then there's uh, some other things, in particular, lead to what I do. Mm -hmm. um, I'm inside a sub team called uh, Media Better Together. Mm -hmm. uh, the whole objective of better together there was actually a lot of coverage of this at ces if you're okay. interested okay um and then line it's making inter um essentially cross device experiences seamless mm -hmm. and, and rich and, mm -hmm. and exciting since we're a part of media mm -hmm. what that means for us is um enabling um apps and users of android um to be able to play media across mm -hmm. different devices, mm -hmm. control it, um, and, and have, and really have that seamless experiences mm -hmm. for media playback across devices. A very clear example of this is, uh, casting, like, mm -hmm. uh, imagine you're playing a song on Spotify or a video on YouTube, you can click the cast button mm -hmm. and instantly start watching this or listening to this on your TV or on your smart speaker yeah. or on other things. Uh, we we make the frameworks and libraries that let that happen uh -huh, on, uh -huh. on Android. So we have different levels of, of abstraction for that. Makes sense. Yeah. It's it's crazy when it comes <laughs> to, we just use the devices and we all like screen share or whatever. But yeah. then when you think of the back end part of these solutions and how things work, yeah. it's it's uh, it can get complicated. So yeah. thanks you for simplifying it yeah. and breaking it down. What would be uh, great to know more about is 
what do you exactly do in your role like day to day for example it can be yeah describing your daily responsibilities if that works or if it's mm-hmm. easier for you maybe like a specific problem you solved without too many details yeah. just for someone to understand okay this is what a software engineer does in his uh, daily life let's say yeah yeah that's a good that's a good point so probably the um, there's a bunch of different responsibilities um i mean there's there are things like bug triaging for instance mm-hmm. or bug handling mm-hmm. uh, we receive a lot of bugs internally and externally that we need to uh, take a look at and we and most of the times the tricky part is knowing who is responsible for these oh. because you can imagine it can be an app issue it can yeah. be an issue of uh, some other library it yeah. can be a version issue and maybe there was something that was already fixed but the update has not landed oh, yet there's yeah. there's a lot of different things into that there's of course more like engineering work uh-huh. in terms of well first of all fixing those bugs yeah um which is a bit different from more uh, from new engineering work uh-huh probably fixing those bugs you're more interested in well what is the risk of breaking something here Else, or, or, yeah. or like how impact could this be or what version should we be doing this in uh versus if you're doing more of a let's say planned engineering work yeah you will probably like have to write a design document Mm -hmm. like you will probably have a bug or a design document that says well here we have a problem or an opportunity to Mm -hmm. fix something or to improve something this is a problem this is my proposal um people comment on that yeah and then you eventually reach a consensus well this is the best way to go forward Uh uh-huh and then you implement it implement tests and then okay um essentially merge that um into the a, into yeah, version android, of android or yeah, exactly depending on the problem on assuming. depending on the problem it could be something inside the android platform as the operating system it can be in so- something inside an android support library uh-huh. which is a different thing which uh-huh. is normally what um app developers are using, using. to um program things on android um Makes and sense. yeah, and then sometimes there's a bit of of planning. There's a bit of, um, let's say, education or learning. presenting or learning. Nice. Like there's a lot of things where you have to learn new things from other teams and yeah. see how they're implementing things. There's a lot of times where you have to help other teams and yeah. explain how your things work. Uh, but yeah, probably at my level, which is a, a, a level we call it like level three uh-huh um that's that are essentially my responsibilities is mm-hmm. mainly bugs and, and mm-hmm. engineering it can vary quite a lot depending on the time of the year because we uh-huh. have a very strict since we're um adding features on an android operating system we have very strict uh calendar deadlines oh. because we only have one main release a year oh okay. so like you have to really think in advance you have you should in theory have everything planned in advance for one or two years uh-huh because you can only make changes at a certain time yeah and because if not you you might break things and then other parts of the year you're focused on fixing bugs or yeah or yeah it's like that uh this it's, 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 it's no it's, that's a great you know because again coming back to the point of the complexity complexity of the your the nature of the department that you work in because yeah. i use this i want to screen share whatever and then maybe someone wants to develop a new thing mm-hmm. when do we have to develop what devices is it going to affect yeah. how are we going to develop it and when yeah. so there's a lot of questions mm-hmm. a lot of different teams that you have to work with yeah. uh, i'm assuming mm-hmm. so how so let's think of uh, of your, like your daily or your week mm-hmm. how much of it is is really coding like how who organizes this do you have full control over okay now i'm going to do the coding part or is it guys or let's we have a sprint we have to do how yeah. does that work so so it again this really depends on the on the team on what you're doing i think like what makes my job probably different is that first i'm not working on a product uh-huh. working on a product 
is very different because you have something that's directly user facing. Mm -hmm. It also probably means that you have, um, like if you were working on an app, you can do daily updates if you want, yeah. and they will immediately reach the user. Yeah. If you're working on the Android platform, you can, you only have an update once a year, and then everything after that, the user might or might not get, because it depends on what updates the OEM is giving them, yeah. and what updates you actually install, yeah. and what support they have, and so on and so forth. So o OEM is the device... Oh, You can think of it as like the device manufacturer, ah, like, like people like Samsung, oh, okay. Huawei, yeah, 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 yeah. Apple, like makes sense people makes like sense um let me go back to your question yeah <laughs> um so let me yeah so in terms of what my week looks like it's it's quite flexible uh -huh. like it it like i can organize my work nice in, in the way that i want and i can with a certain degree of flexibility try to focus on a b or c tasks uh -huh. um of course, the pri normally the priority of things is given by, um, for instance, like if like if I'm working on something long term important, but I have a big bug incoming. Oh, then that that's a high regression. I should probably work on that. Yeah, there's a bit of load balancing along the team saying, well, to make sure that we keep working on in our objectives, but also we deal with incoming bugs or issues or uh -huh, things that are uh -huh. that are urgent but important. Um, so so it really depends on the week. There might be a week that I'm completely working on a just a big bug or something, a big bug. and then maybe a week where it's like a long term a long term project and then feature doing project you exactly. want to integrate. Makes sense. Exactly. And and given all these different companies and using that uh, solutions library that you provide them so that they can develop their apps based mm -hmm. on the Android features, characteristics, and details yeah. you add there. is I'm assuming you all use a common coding language, or, or how does that work so that everyone understands so, this and how to build on it? Yeah, so Android essentially uh, run originally runs Java uh -huh. as its main language. Mm -hmm. Uh, more and more now, uh, libraries and apps are switching to Kotlin. Okay. Um, so, but it's essentially either Java or Kotlin as main options. Uh huh. I I see a lot more Java because we're on the operating system and that okay. still runs mainly on Java because it's old code. Uh huh. Um, you do see a bit of C plus plus, okay. for instance. Interesting. Uh, but that's only used for native code where it needs to be performant or it uh -huh. needs to be uh, low level. We're talking about like drivers okay, or okay. things like that or hard, hardware. Hardware, more hardware related exactly. stuff. Understood. Um, so, but it should be essentially either Java or Kotlin, which are very easy to make sense. A, a lot of uh, people who studied computer science really, uh, let's say, are motivated to apply to uh, Google and it's mm -hmm. one of their dream companies or top companies. Mm -hmm. From your perspective, what what makes working at Google really special? Mm. That's a really good question. Um, again, this this is probably my personal experience mm -hmm. and I think that the personal experience is probably um, related to my preferences. Mm -hmm. um, I think uh, what, I, what I find particularly nice about Google is, first of all, the culture. Mm -hmm. Like, it has a really open, very relaxed culture. It's very, nice. very creative. Um, you feel very comfortable and it's all made so that like you can really think about new ideas and, mm -hmm. and really push things and mm -hmm. really have a like there have the least amount of let's say bureaucracy in uh -huh. a way um it's a very uh bottom up nice uh, the base except of course for a few things here and there but it's essentially bottom up um there there's of course hierarchies but to me it still feels very 
uh, horizontal team, in a way yeah. and, and team based in a way like um, for instance as a managers are not there to like give you orders mm. they're there to help you work better nice and they're there to like help you advance in your career nice. and like do uh, effectively contribute right nice uh and so like you can it reminded me a bit of university in yeah. a way because yeah. it felt like a very creative environment where you can always reach out to people you can nice. always say hey would you i'm interested in what you're doing would you like to have a coffee Catch you up. can yeah. see what team they're working on you normally have this type of stakeholders that are doing really interesting things nice. so um to me, it it I I like that because it's very relaxed. It's also very balanced, mm -hmm. like, which is not something that I've seen from other uh, friends working at tech companies. Yeah, um, like, it's as long as you're doing your work, it's flexible hours. Just go to your meetings, of course, mm -hmm. but work whenever it's it suits you better. Um, and it's also like there's also a great culture of we're all working across hugely different time zones. We work constantly with um, Mountain View, for instance, nice. where there's a nine or eight hour difference. Yeah. And so it's really important and they make it a point that once your work hours are done, are done. you disconnect, you have a, a work profile essentially in your phone where you, yeah. that you can literally turn off Okay. Um, whenever you're done so that you don't get, get things across the weekend. Yeah. You shouldn't be like, people actively tell you you shouldn't be checking your email outside of work hours. Uh -huh. You shouldn't be uh -huh. doing this. Of course, if you want you, you uh -huh. can, uh -huh. but nobody's going to say no to that. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, <laughs> but they make it very clear. Also, how you like reach out to people. There's very, there's, it's very visible and you can very easily tell, like if you're going to send an email to someone, it says, oh, they're out of office. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you won't hear back from them until then or they're outside of working hours. So okay. it's really mindful of the fact that everyone's working different times. Nice. And even inside of a time, some people might have different working times. Nice. Uh, so it, it makes it very flexible and it makes it like really nice to, to work on those things rather nice. than focus on time. Thank you for watching this episode from Career Stocks. If the episode was insightful, please like, share, and subscribe to support the channel. In the next part of the episode, next week we will be talking about how to land a software engineering job at Google with tips on how to use lead code. Thank you again for watching and see us in the next episode.